I was busboy with this other guy who was a, uh, he was a, at Tufts. And I remember saying to him, we should have busboy Olympics. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we should have the bus boy Olympics. And bus we, boy Olympics. We carry like trays and like glasses full of water, and um, he was just like, uh huh, uh huh. And then a couple of days later, we're talking with someone, and, and everyone's ripping into me. And the guy goes, "Yeah," and this guy thinks we should have bus boy Olympics. <laughs> it's like, Dude. it's like this guy sold me out. Oh my god, sold that's me out so on the bus boy Olympics. He laid low. I know. I'm here with lifelong brother. Longtime collaborator Joseph Probiglia is our guest today. Mike, it's great to be back. <laughs> What's so you funny? Pre- you pretending to be some kind of uh, hey. performer? <laughs> yes, there you are. There it is. Well, I joined the Two Time Club. Right? <laughs> Jim Gaffigan. Who else we got? Uh, Jenny's been on twice. Alex Edelman's been on three oh, yeah. times. Otsko's Ira, been on Ira three Glass. times. Ira Glass is on twice. Yeah. It's a big moment. Yeah, it's great to be back. It's um, it's it was a wild year. We 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 did Old Man in the Pool uh, on Broadway. Mostly uh, you did that, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you worked on that a lot. Did, yeah. jo- just to give context, Joe and I have been working together. I'm I'm gonna say twenty plus years. Uh, well, we've been working uh, official in official capacity eighteen years. Eighteen right? years, two thousand six. But basically. 17 years. The, since the moment I started doing stand-up, which was about 25 years ago in college, yeah, we were on the phone talking about jokes. Yeah, beating it out. And here we are again, except today, talking about jokes and stories about Christmas. Yeah. Particularly because we... And, and also, I think, maybe skiing. Because we're, there's two tours that we're announcing. One is the Boston Christmas Parmesan shows yeah. at the Wilbur Theater. Where we're gonna, I'm gonna tell some Christmas stories, but also like it's just a new hour of stand up. And then we're doing, we haven't officially named it yet, but yeah. it's the Joe Berbiglia goes skiing, Mike Berbiglia does comedy tour yeah. in Colorado in March. I'm all in. And my wife is confused. <laughs> <laughs> this came out of an idea. Okay. I think it's sort of a funny story, which is uh, you. I was performing in Salt Lake City oh, yeah. in the spring. Yeah. And then you, yes. which we call you, you sometimes call you America's guest. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes you'll invite yourself along right. to trips. Right. That's something you do. But in this case of Salt Lake City, what happened? I don't recall. I slow rolled it. <laughs> <laughs> because. What do you mean you slow rolled it? Because you booked this date on a Friday in, in Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City, City yeah. in March, which is absolutely the perfect time okay to sure get, to be out skiing okay. in utah i mean it's ideal and i didn't want to be pushy or suggest okay so i slow rolled it until you said why don't you come along to that one and we'll and we'll uh, after the show we'll do some skiing what do you mean you slow roll i it? didn't ask to go on that trip you invited me i waited that, how until is that invited. even slow roll i was in that slow roll i played it cool i didn't push myself in on that one so in other words, you didn't jump the gun, right. and the moment I booked Salt Lake Correct. City, yeah. you go, hey, you know, that'd There's be a the- perfect <laughs> one for me to go on. Correct. There's some mountains there. Right. Yeah. So it worked out. So I was glad it was your idea, and I really wanted to go also. Right. Because in the past, yes. like, for example, there was a trip that the Bob and Tom radio show did to the Bahamas, oh, yeah. and you were like, I'd like to come along. Yeah. And, like, there's been trips... You're like a you're like a professional vacationer. Yeah. So anyway, that's how we came up with the idea. I say to Joe, I go, here's what we should do. Next year, we should come to Colorado and plan a tour of Colorado. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll ski, and we'll call it the Joe Berbiglia goes skiing. Mike Berbiglia performs stand up comedy yeah. tour because people will think that's funny. The way that this is us talking about this now is pretty yeah. funny. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and also like. Uh, that's one of the things I like most about the fact that we have our own company. We started yes. this company like yeah. 18 years ago. We can just decide like that's the name <laughs> of the tour and then it just is. That's right. Like, there's no corporation. I know. There's no running it up the flagpole. There's flag no flagpole. Po- there is no flagpole. You flag are pole. the flagpole. I'm the flagpole. <laughs> We're all, I'm the flagpole. We're all kind of <laughs> various heights on the flagpole. Um, So... Okay, so we're doing Christmas Parmesan, and we're doing <laughs> Joko skiing. You're getting a little more strategic with your tour booking. I've, sometimes I have to remind you, let's not book a week in Chicago in early February. 
Yeah. Or Fargo. Yeah. In Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, the highway's frozen. Oh, my God. You're bringing up a funny story. <laughs> we, years ago, we were, I did a show in Minneapolis, yeah. and then I think the next day was in Fargo. Yeah. North Dakota. And, yeah, I didn't really think that through. <laughs> and and the highway was fully frozen. Yeah. And we were driving, I think, probably four hours or so. Yeah, we had a two-wheel drive Suburban. Yeah. Which was not ideal. And, yeah, there were jackknifed 18-wheelers, like, all over the place on the highway. It was... <laughs> it was like Armageddon because it was a, like, imagine you're fleeing a city in an Armageddon situation yeah. and you just see cars that <laughs> broken down on along the yeah. highway yeah. and you just go, we must leave you. Should we help? <laughs> <laughs> we, no. I'm so sorry. Should we help? No, we can't. We would, we would help if we had any skills. If we, trust me. If we have we, been all of ours. If we had skills, we would help you in a second. <laughs> By the way, there's... I think there's going to be a Buffalo announcement soon, yeah. um, which is cool. But I was visiting our, our late grandmother in Buffalo, New York once, driving to, grandma, <laughs> driving, <laughs> driving to grandma's house. And it is a white, what they call a whiteout on the road for an hour. It is the winter. Yeah. I'm driving from Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I was doing the club, Junior's Last Laugh, like great club in Erie. I'm driving to Buffalo. Full white out. Can't see a thing. Yeah. Can't see 10 feet in front of me. Yeah, yeah. And at one point, I pull over and just stop because I'm like, well, I can't drive. Yeah. Surely I can't drive. <laughs> then I'll die. Right. So I pull over yeah. and I'm stop. And I realize that all the cars going past are sliding towards me oh, and yeah. they might hit me also. Oh, yeah. So if I stop, yeah. I'm going to die. Yeah. And if I keep going, I might die. Yeah. So both scenarios are bad. Right. So... And, and and I really, I mean, honestly, it was the closest I've come in my life to going like, oh, this is like, this this could be real bad for me. Yeah. And I get to grandma's house and <laughs> grandma Mackenzie and I, and I, and I'm like, grandma, the weather was cr the crazy, this craziest storm. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I want to turn on the news to watch the weather. I turn on the, like the six o'clock news, yeah. the weather, no mention of it. Oh, jeez, Wow. It's like. Weather's fine today. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what Buffalo is. And yeah. I remember I called you and you, I go, Joe, this crazy thing happened, the storm and the whiteout. Yeah. And you go, people shouldn't live there. <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, one time, this is a funny road story from <laughs> Ed Harrow. You know, Ed from my college improv mm, group. He's a great guy. He was opening for me one time in the Midwest and <laughs> we had a, he, we had a flat. <laughs> And this guy comes over and to help us out. And <laughs> did I ever tell you this story? No. And this guy's like, literally, he, he, he like jacks the car <laughs> and he's helping put a wheel on all the stuff. He's underneath our car. <laughs> and he looks up and he goes, y'all good with Jesus? I swear to God. Y'all good with Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and we're, we go, absolutely we are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. We love Jesus. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I always bring that up as like my best example of in a pinch, you'll lie about anything. Right. So we're talking about Boston today because we just announced Christmas Parmesan. Yep. Doing a whole bunch of show shows in Boston, Wilbur Theater, the new hour, my new hour of comedy for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, we grew up not in Boston, right? But in Worcester, right? One hour away. One hour away. Felt like, uh, you know, thousand miles away. Like it's, yeah. to me, it felt exotic. Boston, absolutely. This is the big city. Yeah. So this is a funny, like Boston story that you and I laugh about sometimes. Okay. I always say to people that the best type of comedy, to me, this is just yeah. to me, is. Inside jokes. Sure. Um, <laughs> so, so I, so you and I have one. Yeah. Which I've said to a couple people and they think it's pretty funny, but I'll say on the podcast right. and we'll see if people think it's funny. When you and I, we were bus boys at a restaurant yes. in high school. Yeah. And there was this, like a third bus boy. Yeah. This dude who's probably about my age. Yeah. 
He had a thick, thick Boston accent. Yeah. He was really smart. He went to Boston Latin. He was okay. a smart, smart guy, but he had a thick, thick Boston accent. Yeah. And he goes, we were talking about our dad, something to do with our dad having yeah. to go to the hospital because yeah. blah, 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 because our dad's a doctor. And out of nowhere, he looks at you and me and he goes, you think I give a care what your father does? Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> and both you and I are just looking at each other. What what is happening? Yeah. Like, did we miss something? Did, right. Like it's one of those moments where you go, I don't know how to get out of this conversation. Yeah. We just both go, No, we're just talking about our dad and our dad I don't know. I, and then to this day, yeah. you and I have a code which is you think I give a care what your father does. Yeah. <laughs> I always enjoy that one, yeah. I don't even know why it's funny. I just think it's so funny. First of all, give a care feels right. like a quintessential yes. Boston phrase. Yeah. You think I give a care? Yeah. That's that that's accepted. <laughs> that's an accepted turn of phrase. <laughs> There's no logic to yeah. that sentence. You yeah. think I give a care? Yeah. And then what your father does is very Boston because I think <laughs> because Massachusetts is very blue collar, white collar. Yes. And there's a lot of like, what's your father do? He's firefighter? Right. Cop? Doctor? <laughs> lawyer? Teacher? Right. You know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, give a care what your father does. Yeah. I, I always remember that job because I uh, I was busboy with this other guy who was, a, uh, he was a, at Tufts. And I remember saying to him, we should have busboy Olympics. <laughs> you know? <laughs> We should have the Busboy Olympics. And busboy we, Olympics? We carry like trays and like glasses full of water. And um, he was just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then a couple of days later, we're talking with someone and, and everyone's ripping into me. And the guy goes, yeah, and this guy thinks we should have Busboy Olympics. <laughs> it's, like, Dude. it's like, this guy sold me out. Oh, my God. Sold that's me out so on the Busboy funny. Olympics. He laid low. I know. He laid low He was humoring me it. and thought it was a good idea. Oh my god. I stand gosh. by it. Oh, that's huge. The Bus Boy Olympics. <laughs> yeah. This guy thinks we should do the Bus Boy Olympics. It's like I wasn't being serious, you know? So, it was, was a some, bit. Having some fun. It was a bit. Yeah. Got oh my sense. gosh. I, um, re I remember that, that, that restaurant where yeah. we waited tables. I loved the rolls at yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. Like they had these white rolls that oh, were like, rolls. Yeah. they almost looked like little baseballs yeah. or something. They're yeah. like, they're so like nice. Like, yeah. And I love bread. Yeah. Like, to this day, like, I love I love bread so yeah. much. Yeah. And and when I discovered that the tins of rolls, because we would yeah. bring rolls to yeah. in baskets, and we'd open the tin, and uh. they'd be warm. Yeah. And I would just stuff my I'd have eight. <laughs> I'd have like eight nine yeah. rolls, yeah. and then I'd go out and bring people their rolls. I'd be like, everybody wins. I can one up you that much. <laughs> so that was like a seafood restaurant, right? Water. <laughs> And um, people would order baked stuff lobster. Yeah. Right? But a lot of people would order lobster and not know that there was lobster meat in the tail of the lobster. Oh, my So we God. would clear. It was like $65 this is dish. Ridiculous. This is outrageous. So we're clearing tables, me and uh, my friend Graham. And we're bringing in these lobsters and just ripping the tails off right by the dishwashing station and, like, eating lobster tails and then throwing the rest away, like, on the spot. That's absurd. <laughs> Did you ever do that? No, I don't uh, like... I, I, first of all, I wouldn't, I don't think I would do that. Yeah. Second of all, I don't eat fish. Would you drink a Heineken that person had only one sip of? <laughs> Is that something you did too? <laughs> <laughs> it's one sip. I remember Oh yeah. there was a guy at that restaurant and his name was Chuck. Remember this guy? Yeah, I know Chuck. Yeah. yeah. He was a professional a waiter. Professional waiter. He's probably in his forties sure. and we were teenagers. Yeah. And he would be there in Cape Cod in the summers, and then in the in the winters he'd go to the Caribbean. He'd be a waiter in the yeah. Caribbean. He just liked to be where it was. Yeah. it was yeah. nice, natural server. And I loved him. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah, and one and and um, the reason I remember Chuck so well is that my first night on the job, um, I was putting water on people's table and I was watering their glasses, oh, right. and I dropped the pitcher of water. On the table, it shattered glass oh, wow. between a couple on a date, a candlelit, <laughs> candlelit dinner. <laughs> awesome. And it was, they were wet and yeah. there were like glass all over. I mean, it was <laughs> awful. And Chuck runs over and he helps out yeah. and he like cleans it up and it was so professional. 
And I walk, and we walk into the kitchen together, and I'm like almost in tears. And he goes, "That was so fucking funny." <laughs> he goes, "Did you see the look on their faces? Yeah, that was fucking hilarious." That's and I was awesome. like, "I love this guy." Yeah, he's a great guy. There's a funny memory I, that I was thinking of today about Boston. The 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 comedy connection, which yeah. is the Wilbur, used to be at Faneuil Hall. Of course, you remember yeah. that? Uh, yeah, and I was talking about Faneuil Hall. And we, yeah, and we. We used to grow up going to Faneuil Hall. And yeah, yeah. when I got out of college, um, there was a Comedy Central competition. Yes. It was called the Laugh Riots competition. Yes. Eugene Merman was in it. All these Boston comics were in it. Yeah. And- $10,000 for first place. Was it really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so, so I was gonna enter. It was New York, Boston, yeah. Chicago, LA. There was like 10 of them. Yeah. And I go, this is so crazy. This is like, no, this would never happen in this era. This is like 2000, right. 2000, 2000, 2000, not even 2001. I just yeah. graduated from college. Yeah. I'm going between living in our parents' house in Massachusetts and living on our sister Gina's couch in Brooklyn. Yeah. In, in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. Of course. I'm going back and forth and I call Comedy Central yeah. and I go, hey, I have a dilemma. The contest that you have is in Boston, and it's also in New York. Yeah. And I don't know which one is the f right one for me to That's enter right. in. Yeah. And the person on the phone said to me, you're going to want to enter in Boston. <laughs> There's basically like 20 entries. Yeah. And New York has like 1,000 entries. Wow. So I entered. Loophole. In, I entered in Boston. Yeah. I got into the finals. They were at Faneuil Hall, yeah. Comedy Connection. And then the winner was uh, Eugene Merman. Eugene won that? Yeah. He, and, he won and then he went to the national finals or whatever it was. Oh. And then all the comics backstage were like, were like, uh, were like, it's fixed. Oh. Eugene Merman knows the people. <laughs> he knows the judges. <laughs> I was like, all right, you guys, conspiracy <laughs> theories at the comedy contest. Wow. Like, let's keep it down a little bit. Yeah. This is crazy. That was a nice room up there, Comedy Connection. Yeah, gorgeous. So now that is, oh, that's the same owner that Absolutely. moved to the Wilbur, yeah. and that's where my shows are. Amazing. For Christmas. So it's kind of a dream. It's kind of a dream to be doing a whole ton of sold out shows in Boston. So let's talk about Christmas, because yeah. Christmas, Christmas Parmesan. Oh um, my God. We, that's a, but that's another one, Christmas Parmesan. We just, yes. We called it Christmas Parmesan just because we have a joke in Old Man in the Pool about how, I think the joke is, <laughs> we didn't really it wasn't very religious yes christmas for us if anything the theme was uh chicken parmesan yes and then i after that point i just refer to christmas as christmas parmesan in the yeah. show yeah it's actually one of my favorite types of jokes yeah in the sense that there's no real punchline oh yeah and people are just laughing out of recognition i think of like, people get it too they get it yeah you know i was always so asking our sister gina about it the other day yeah i go like do you remember anything from christmas she goes well nick naples who we loved and yeah. was your godfather your late godfather I didn't remember this. He used to bring cannoli from the from the north end of Boston. Exactly. And not and only like that. Like 24 a year. Oh, I would think he would bring like 40 of them. Oh, really? Yeah. In and fact, they were amazing. They're fantastic. But at the same time, like cannoli, <laughs> cannoli is not something everybody likes. <laughs> so when you show up with like 40 cannoli for 20 free people, you're going to have leftover cannoli. a lot. So we would be eating them for days. Yeah, you're right. We used to go big on Christmas. Yeah, I think oh, yeah, that's absolutely. the reason why I always talk about it. It's yeah. like we had boxes and boxes of decorations. A lot of swag, right? Yeah. It was like it's the only holiday you get out boxes of um, of gear. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of merch. Yeah, a lot of merch. You know what I mean? Um, major nativity scene. Yeah. We had this huge wooden nativity it, scene. Uh, yeah. It was wild. With Jesus and the wise men yes. and the Well, I, I always shepherds. go back to that. I always go back to that nativity scene because uh, we had some really like oversized action figures. Huge, uh, huge. Pieces. And they, I think they were Italian. So we would just be like, all right, this has been in the family for generations. <laughs> but we don't really know. I don't think it. I don't how many generations? I don't think so. <laughs> but also like we would kind of play with them too, right? Like they were sort of like action figures. <laughs> and also, wouldn't they, they would get like a little more broken each year. Yes. Because of the playing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. Um, I wrote this joke last year about about uh, that nativity scene, which 
it never ended up in the show, but yeah. I thought it was a funny point, which is um, is like uh, Joseph, the father of Jesus, yeah. really, really bad deal there. <laughs> Very understanding. Very understanding. Very understanding. <laughs> His girlfriend comes to him like, hey, so we're not going to have sex, but yeah. God, I was talking to God. Yeah. God was like, yeah, I should have a baby. The babe. story bears further scrutiny. <laughs> 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 we, we can't have sex. Oh, you, so who wears the baby from? Well, I God gave put the baby yeah. so you had sex with God. Eh, sort yeah. of. I sort of had sex with God. I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. So we went big on Christmas, but yeah. then in our 20s, our mom, who's like a very serious, kind Christian person, takes the whole thing very seriously. She's like a model kind of uh, re religious person in a way that I res very much respect. Yeah. It's not the way I've gone, but it's I, I respect. She decided... Consumerism oh, and Christmas is yeah. too much. Love it. Everyone can give each other a <laughs> gift. <laughs> Everyone, you know that this is going. Everyone can give each other a gift. It must be less than five dollars in value. <laughs> five dollars in value. <clears throat> yeah. Can anyone she was a <laughs> raise your hand if you can think of a gift yeah. that one could purchase? Yeah. She really pulled the e-brake on that thing. Because, <laughs> you know, we really did have these 1980s excess. You know, that, the theme of Christmas in the 1980s yes. was a bit of excess. Absolutely. At our, at our joint. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Um, so it would be like bars of soap. <laughs> it would be like Christmas cards. And... Do you would you remember your favorite gift? Well, I was a bit of a sleuth and a shark with gifts. Yes, in that I knew all of my parents, our parents' hiding places for gifts. As some yes, kids I remember do. when you showed me this. Yes, um, I actually remember very well. It was like a loss of innocence. <laughs> you you showed me where you basically go. Hey, Mike, um, Santa Claus doesn't exist. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? You're like, come right this way. And I'll you, show you the workshop. Yeah, yeah. You pushed aside. You pushed aside like a huge, like, hutch. Yeah. And then you opened up the wall. Yeah, it's a where, door. It's a doorway. A little. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like a, a compartment. It was a compartment. It wasn't yeah. a door. Right. It was like it was like a. It was inside the wall where there's insulation. Yes. And like bare wood and treasures and treasures and all the Christmas presents. And you're like, mom and dad are Santa Claus, and you just <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> And I, it was a huge loss of innocence for me. Sorry. Because, you know, it was not unlike mm -hmm. like being John Malkovich or something or The okay. Matrix. Okay. <laughs> where you're just like, I thought that's where a chest of drawers and yes. a mirror was. Yeah. I thought that's where that is. There's more to the story. And then you're like, let me push this chest of drawers and mirror aside. Yeah. Here are all the Christmas presents that you thought were about to be given to us <laughs> by a fictional thing called Santa Claus. Oh, no, but I mean, I was like 10 or something. Yeah, you were ready. Uh, you were ready. I was ready. I was ready. Yeah. I can remember knowing so much about our gifts at a certain point um, that I had asked for the Nerf pool set. Right? Okay. And I had found it, but then Santa forgot to bring it on Christmas <laughs> and having to tell my mom, hey, uh, I'm pretty sure Santa also got us a pool set. It's in the trunk of your car. And my our mom would just be like, oh yeah, you're right. That's in the car. Let me go. Oh my gosh. Can you recall like your favorite gift or uh, outstanding gift you received in your life? So I always remember uh, when we were about, I was about 13 years old, 14, uh, they, we got a, a Duffer, which was our Carrie Blue Terrier. Yeah. Which dog. was a fantastic dog. Yeah, so that yeah. was very special. But one in particular, I always recalling, it didn't occur to me until years later, is when I was 10 or 11, I got this Star Trek spaceship kind of thing. Okay. Uh, which made a really loud beeping noise. Okay. And I absolutely loved it. And I ran around the house for hours and, and I could tell that it drove our parents crazy. Mm. So which made it even that much better. And I remember that afternoon of Christmas day, it disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just absolutely could not find it anywhere. Yeah. And it was, it was gone. And it wasn't until a year or two later, I thought, I know where that damn spaceship is my parents threw it in the garbage oh my god <laughs> right that stands to exactly, reason that's exactly what i would have what done. you would do yeah 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 as a parent <laughs> this is a joke about christmas 
Everything you need to know about Christianity is summed up with Jesus and Santa Claus. Jesus is a painfully skinny socialist with no belongings. Santa Claus is a fat capitalist glutton who eats your cookies and hands out shitty presents made from China. Jesus is, uh, Jesus is like, this is a parable. And Santa's like, pair of what? Better be a pair of cupcakes because Santa <laughs> likes to eat. By the way, do you mind if I take a nap on your roof? I'm drunk yeah that's all i got right but it's true it's like it's yeah. a it's bizarre that the holiday is based on this socialist man yeah jesus if you believe in that and then uh rep and then the, <gasps> the, the the fictional the fictional fun man is santa claus right who's just like the epitome of gluttony yeah the church never really tries to reconcile that no um and then i also wrote down that our daughter doesn't believe in santa claus um but we were FaceTiming with her cousin and the, her cousin said, what did you ask for from Santa? And she looked at me and Jenny and winked <laughs> <laughs> like, she, like she's in on it. Wow. Um, by the way, I think she's a little on the young side for winking. <laughs> <laughs> winking is basically like saying we're both lying together. Right. 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 <laughs> That's uh, so it's like we won't lie to our daughter about Santa Claus, but it forces us to lie with our daughter yeah. to other kids about Santa right. Claus. Right, it makes you complicit. I don't, both Jenny and I, we don't really believe in the lying to the kids thing. Right, right. Like, I don't get the upside. Yeah. How long did you, your kids don't believe in Santa, right? My children are 16 and 14. Correct. <laughs> So you didn't have I would to, be alarmed. There would be no <laughs> reason to say it like that. Um, <laughs> have you seen a picture of my kids lately? This <laughs> one <that> drives. <clears throat> but now we're going to the new hour, which is tentatively, I've never said this on the show, tentatively titled Please Stop the Ride. Yes. Because it kind of incorporates some elements of um, uh, the Scrambler story. Yeah. And some flashbacks to childhood. And um, how do you think it's going so far? Great. I we mean, talk about it all the time. Yeah. So what we talk about constantly. Uh, I was listening to the Levittown performance. I thought it was great. I think you did a couple stints in Providence, and it was uh, not night and day, but I, th I think you could really see it move along the continuum and mm. get a lot stronger in the second the second run of shows. What's your favorite stuff in the new hour? Huh. What do you like the most? I, I feel like you like dishwasher. Wash, oh, yeah. Doesn't wash dishes. I really like that. Yeah. And you're always like, this is you when I walk off stage. You always go, Hey, why didn't you do this? Rush doesn't want to do this because <laughs> it's a crowd pleaser. Uh, it's, 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 I love that one. It's a crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> since this is working it out, uh, just to bring people into the process of, of what we do is like a lot of times we'll just talk on the phone or on a Zoom for like a couple hours. What about this story? Yeah. What about this story? What about this story? And a vast majority of what we talk about doesn't end up in the show. Yeah. Like, that's what's crazy. I know. Is like, it, like probably for every show, for every old man in the pool, my girlfriend's boyfriend, thank God for jokes, sleepwalk with me. There's got to be two, three hours of jokes and stories that yeah. just don't make it in. Yeah. It's hard to throw away hours and days of work like that. But that's the nature of it. Of it. Yeah. But that, you know, just to, just to put it in context of like another creative we know and revere is uh, ira glass always when he's, do, when he's doing this american life they have a wall just like this a wall of stories yeah. that are that are for that theme for that week yeah and half of them or two-thirds of them just go away yeah. yeah yeah and those are like stories that people spend a lot of time on right hours and hours and hours totally incredible they call and they call that at the this american life on the staff they call that killing a story and they yeah. say they take a lot of pro they take a lot of joy in killing a story really? because it means that that episode is going to be that much better okay yeah. and that's how we have to look at it yeah even though it's tough yeah i mean we have jokes where we're like that's a great joke it just doesn't fit in i know doesn't fit in the hour yeah but then a lot of times those, those come back later yeah um I feel like this will give people an insight into sort of how these shows arrive the way they do. The old man in the pool and the new one and, and sleepwalk with me and my, my girlfriend's boyfriend is like <laughs> all these cards that are right. on the walls and stuff. Essentially all of these things start as single jokes. Yeah. And then they become a story and then they come become a story 
sort of with an ending or a point of some kind. Yeah. And then there's maybe 10 or 15 or 20 of them. And yeah. then there starts to become like, that's a theme. It's right. This fits that theme. Yeah. This fits that theme. This fits that theme. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, and then what if the whole thing is leading towards one main story? Yeah. And, and sort of the phase that we're at right now, which is like, which is like, we just got tons of jokes and stories on the yeah. wall. So whenever like someone close to me, like says like, oh, that story from the bus is an example of yes. this other thing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's so great. Such a great point. I do like that story too. Yeah. The bus story. It was fun. Um, yeah, I liken it often to uh, it's almost like playing a board game, like a categories or something like that. It's like make it's about making connections. Yeah, and just like lacing it together. Uh, my my contention <laughs> about whether it's stand up or any kind of like storytelling art, anything, yeah, is obsession. Right. If you're obsessed with the thing, yeah, then people in the audience will be obsessed with the thing. If I, you're not obsessed with the thing, yeah. you're nowhere. Right. I agree. They can't eat. And I feel like my obsession currently is some combination of like being married yeah. and realizing that so many things yeah. in adulthood are really analogous to childhood. I agree. I mean, one of the things about the show that I'm sort of grappling with, I actually said this to Ira Glass the other day because mm -hmm. he saw a version of it. And I was like, I wonder if it's too much about like being married and having a child hmm. and that's not relatable to people. Yeah. And Ira said, he goes, no, no, he is so many people are in relationships. So many people have kids and so many people right. can see it through the lens of being kids. So like you're, as long as your stories are well-rounded in terms of mm -hmm. like seeing all the perspectives in the story yeah. i think you're okay the final segment is working out for a cause is there an organization you want to contribute to that you feel like would yeah be absolutely I, wh why not i think in uh, light of your shows upcoming in boston we should do the greater boston food bank Make yes greater there. greater boston food bank we always try to contribute to food banks we've contributed to a lot of them over the years and I, so I read their mail, they send, they really know how to stretch a dollar. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable yeah. what they can do, how many meals they can, these food banks can create yeah. for giving 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever you can give. Um, Greater Boston Food Bank. Thank you, Joe, uh, for being on the podcast. Returning champion. <laughs> I think we might see uh, an, a third one in our future. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks. It's been fantastic. Thank you for having me today. All right.